Hello, I'm Ron Vale, and I'm going to follow up from the last lecture where we talked about how lenses work and now discuss how lenses are used in a microscope, specifically how they're used to um, focus light from the specimen so that you can see it either with your eye uh, or with a camera, and also how we use lenses to uh, collect light from a light source um, and focus it on the specimen using a technique called curler illumination. And finally, I'm going to discuss the conjugate image planes of the microscope. Well, before we start discussing the lenses in the microscope, let's just review some of the features of lenses that we learned about from the first lecture. So here we have an object. Uh, this object is an arrow. And we're going to place that object um, to the left side of the focal plane of this particular lens here. And the object is going to be emitting light here. Some of that light is um, collected by this lens and bent. And it comes to a focus here uh, using principles of ray tracing that we learned from the first lecture. And here is just an, another point in the middle of the object uh, that, again, is being focused. And the bottom of this arrow, again, being focused to create an image on the other side of the lens. Um, now, we also learned from the lens maker's equation that if you know the focal length of this lens and the distance of this object away from the lens, you can predict where the image will form on the right side of the lens. And the magnification that's created by the lens, uh, well, by definition, is the size of the image um, divided by the size of the object, which is also proportional to the distance of this image away from this lens um, divided by the distance of the object from the lens. Now, just as a review, there are two other key points about lenses that I uh, would just like to cover again uh, because they're very important for understanding how these lenses work in the microscope. So uh, one key point about how lenses work is that parallel, a parallel beam of light coming into the lens, as you see here, uh, comes to a focus uh, at the focal plane of this particular lens. In fact, that's the definition of the focal plane. Uh, so parallel light comes to a focus on the other side. And conversely, light that is diverging uh, from this focal plane over here uh, passes through the lens on the other side as parallel light. And we'll see how this comes into play in the way the optics work in the microscope. So the most important uh, lens in your microscope is the uh, objective lens, which I'm uh, showing over here. Uh, and I'm depicting it here as a pretty uh, simple, thin lens. In reality, as you'll hear from the next lecture, um, which is devoted to objective lenses, it, it's actually quite a complex series of lenses that are put together. Uh, but here, I'm just simplifying that in, into a simple lens. And if you bought an objective lens um, or had a have a microscope that is from the 1970s or 80s, uh, it works by a principle of uh, finite imaging. In other words, uh, this uh, lens works pretty much like the lens I just showed you a couple slides ago, where uh, the specimen or your object is placed um, a short distance away from the focal point of this objective. And then light travels through this objective lens. Here's the tip of the arrow coming into a focus, the middle and the bottom of this arrow, which is all focused by this objective lens to create an image on the other side uh, at a fixed distance away from that objective lens. And for many uh, microscopes that were built in that era, that distance uh, is about 160 millimeters. Um, now, if you have a microscope uh, that you purchased more recently, like in the last 20 years, those objective lenses and those microscopes work uh, using a different optical system, um, using infinity objectives. And the way this works is now the, uh, the object, your specimen, is placed exactly at the focal plane of this objective lens. And as we just discussed, light uh, coming from the focal plane um, from your specimen will travel through this objective lens on the other side as parallel light. So here's uh, light coming from the top of this arrowhead, the middle and the bottom, all emerging on the other side as parallel light, which obviously 
uh, is diffuse light. It's not going to create an image. So you need to have another lens in this system, which is the tube lens, such as shown here, which now takes this parallel light and refocuses it uh, to create an image on the other side. Um, so the one reason why um, manufacturers have turned to this is it offers more flexibility in the design of the microscope and where you place the tube lens because uh, this, all this light is uh, traveling uh, parallel. So you can place this uh, tube lens in, in different points of the light path. And that allows you also flexibility for putting uh, more types of uh, devices such as dichroic lenses or other modifiers to, to the light in the optical path between the objective lens and the tube lens. Uh, now in this case, the magnification of uh, the combination of these two lenses is given by this formula here, which is the focal length of the tube lens, which is usually a big number, uh, divided by the focal length of the objective lens, which is usually a much smaller number, uh, and that gives you uh, the degree of magnification of this system. Okay, so then how do we actually see this image? Uh, well, there are two ways. One is to view it with your eye uh, and through an eyepiece. And the way this is typically done is light comes from your uh, specimen here. It's focused through these two lenses that we just talked about, the objective lens and the tube lens, to come and produce an intermediate image. But we're now going to put another lens system um, here that can further magnify this intermediate image uh, and produce greater magnification by going through an eyepiece. And we're going to have a, a short lecture where you can learn more about how these eyepieces work. And then through another lens, which is actually the lens in your eye, to create um, a final uh, image on your retina, which is your detector. So here we have uh, different uh, points of your specimen all traveling through uh, this optical system uh, to be focused on your retina um, to create you know, this final image that you can see on your retina and process by your brain. Now the other way to, to capture your image is by using a camera. And the simplest approach for that is just to place the camera at the intermediate image plane. So again, here we just learned that light coming from your object travels through the objective and tube lens and comes into focus uh, here from different points in the object. And this is the intermediate image plane. And now we can just place a camera right at that Im intermediate image plane. And the detector now will uh, be able to record this in-focus image. And, um, for, for many uh, uh, cases, the magnification that you achieve uh, through the objective and tube lens is sufficient. And we'll talk about how to optimize the, the proper magnification um, for particular cameras later uh, on in this lecture series. In some cases, you may want to ma magnify the image more, in which case you can now introduce a projection eyepiece that, again, uh, collects the light uh, that's coming through this optical system from this intermediate image plane is then it diverges. It's recollected by this eyepiece, uh, which gives you additional magnification, and then ultimately focused on, on the camera. So we've just covered now how lenses are used from the specimen to create an image either on a camera or uh, through the eyepiece onto your uh, retina. Uh, now, lenses are also used uh, to illuminate the sample as well, to um, collect and focus light from a lamp. And you'll hear uh, additional special lecture on different kinds of lamps that are used in microscopy. But we need to uh, collect and focus that light uh, onto the specimen. And for transmitted light, uh, uh, the best way to illuminate the specimen is using a technique called uh, curler illumination. And the way this works is that you have your light source over here. And the light source is first um, uh, goes through a collector lens, which is usually, the lens is usually placed very close to the light source. Many microscopes also have an additional lens called a field lens. But the combined goal of the collector and the field lens is to focus light coming uh, from uh, the lamp 
uh, from point sources on the lamp, the light gets focused uh, to a plane, which is the front focal plane of the condenser lens. Um, so here's a condenser lens over here. And uh, the front focal plane is usually um, right at the bottom of this condenser lens at an aperture that I'll describe later. And we just learned that if um, light is uh, emanating uh, from this focal point uh, at the focal plane of this lens over here, it's then going to travel through the lens on the other side as parallel light. So here we have parallel light uh, illuminating the specimen. And we're going to have a special laboratory where we're going to discuss, in fact, how to adjust all of these lenses to achieve uh, curler illumination. Um, but the contrasting way of illuminating the specimen is called uh, critical illumination. And in this case, instead of having defocused uh, parallel light at the specimen, critical illumination focuses uh, light from the lamp uh, directly onto the specimen. So an image of the light source is projected onto the sample itself. Now this can focus and create a very intense uh, illumination at the sample plane. But because it creates an image of the lamp, uh, the lamp may be, have very uneven, uh, uh, may have a filament, and may be very uneven, and that uh, creates uneven illumination at the sample. So the main reason for using curler illumination is to generate uniform light intensity at the specimen, even if the light source itself uh, may be somewhat non-uniform. Uh, by defocusing it and having parallel light, you can generate the best uh, 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 type of even illumination possible. So anyway, let's go to the microscope now and have a look where all of these uh, lenses are in a real microscope. OK, so let, now let's look at uh, where the lenses are in, a, in the real microscope over here. So let's first of all start uh, from the lamp. So here we have the illuminating source. It's this uh, filament here. And then we have a lens in front of that, which is the collecting lens for the light. And that light then travels through this part of the microscope. And uh, in the top part of the microscope, there's a second lens, which is our, our field lens. And if I turn it upside down, you can then see uh, this piece of glass, which is uh, the field lens. And uh, the combination of the collector lens and the field lens are used to focus the image of uh, the lamp onto the front focal plane of the condenser. So that's the next lens in the system. So let's look at that one. Uh, let's take out our collector lens over here. We can slide it out. Um, and so if we look at the front part, uh, this is uh, the condenser lens itself over here. And the front focal plane of this lens is uh, where an iris is placed. This is the condenser diaphragm. Um, and we can open and close this diaphragm. So the image of the light source is uh, focused on, onto this part over here. Um, and uh, light coming from the fo front focal plane of a lens like the condenser lens will then travel on the other side as parallel light, uh, which is illuminating this specimen. So then the next lens in, in the system here uh, is the objective lens. And we'll have a whole lecture on objective lenses. Uh, but this just shows the uh, objective lens over here. And um, then the objective lens is used in conjunction um, with a tube lens that we talked about. The tube lens is kind of buried in the body of the microscope, so I can't show it to you. But uh, light collected from the objective and the tube lens uh, is then either uh, focused on to the CCD chip of the camera over here. Or there's an intermediate image created uh, uh, just in front of the eyepiece. And the combination of the lenses in the eyepiece uh, with the lens of your eye is then used uh, to create an image of the specimen on your retina. OK, so the last point I'd like to cover in these lectures are conjugate planes uh, in a microscope. And conjugate planes are different planes or locations in this microscope system that are in simultaneous focus. 
And when you view these planes uh, through the microscope system, they appear to be uh, superimposed and in focus with one another. And let me illustrate this with uh, uh, some examples here. So first of all, uh, we have image forming planes. So we already discussed that uh, we can view the specimen through this combination of the objective lens and the tube lens. And this creates uh, a, a focus and an image on a detector such as the camera. Now, below the sample, uh, manufacturers have also placed uh, a field diaphragm, uh, which if the system is set up in proper curler illumination, uh, that field diaphragm uh, gets focused on uh, to the plane of the sample. So there'll be an image. This field diaphragm is actually a physical entity. It has an iris, uh, as I'll show you in a second. And it gets focused onto the sample. And in turn, it goes through the objective lens uh, and the tube lens. And the image of this field diaphragm is also imaged on the detector as well. So if we're looking at this uh, uh, aligned microscope through a camera, what we see is the following. If we close down the field diaphragm, we see not only an image of the specimen over here, but we also actually see the image of the iris of this field diaphragm uh, superimposed and in focus uh, with the specimen itself. Uh, and by opening and closing the field diaphragm, as you'll see in a second, we can restrict or enlarge the field of view. So now uh, let's talk about the conjugate image planes of the microscope and, and show you where they are. Uh, so first of all, let's discuss the, uh, the image forming planes, uh, starting with the field diaphragm. So the field diaphragm is an iris that's uh, uh, in front of the lamp. And um, uh, in fact, if we take this unit apart here, uh, we can see uh, this iris uh, in the body of the microscope and see it, we can see it open and close. Um, and uh, if we adjust the position of this condenser lens appropriately uh, on this rail, uh, we can focus the image of that iris on to the uh, specimen plane. So the image of the iris will be superimposed on the specimen. Um, and the specimen and the field diaphragm, those images uh, will then be projected by the objective lens and uh, the tube lens either directly onto the uh, CCD chip or through the combination of the eyepiece and your lens onto your, onto your retina. There's also a separate uh, group of planes uh, that are involved in illumination, in curler illumination. So again, we talked about how the light source uh, is focused uh, through these set of lenses on to the front focal plane of the condenser lens. Uh, this is also the location of an iris diaphragm at this front focal plane. Um, and then uh, it comes out as parallel light uh, bathing the specimen which gets refocused to the back focal plane of the objective lens. Uh, and then it travels through and it becomes diffuse again at the detector. So we can't see an image of the light source. But we can see an image of the light source here at the front focal plane of um, the condenser. And there's also an image of the light source at the back focal plane of the condenser as well. Now normally we can't see the image of the light source on the camera with your eyepiece because we're looking at the wrong focal plane. But if you put another lens in the system, which is often co called a Bertrand lens, or also an eyepiece telescope, instead of focusing on the specimen like we normally do, we can focus on the back focal plane of the objective and now see uh, an image of the light source. And in fact, that's a technique that we can use to uh, center our light source and uh, center our light source and make sure that everything's aligned properly for curler illumination. So again, we'll go through these steps in uh, at the microscope, 
and show how you can use the Bertrand land, lens uh, to image the light source. So there's a separate set of uh, planes uh, for imaging the illuminating source. So the light source uh, starts off with a physical object, a, a filament in, uh, in the bulb, and uh, the image of that light is then uh, focused in curler illumination through the collector lens, field lens, onto the front focal plane of uh, the condenser lens, uh, where there happens to be uh, an iris that opens and closes. Now light from the fo front focal plane emerges from the condenser lens as parallel light through the specimen, and that parallel light travels through uh, the objective lens and is refocused on the back focal plane of the, of the objective, which is some, usually buried somewhere inside the uh, body of the objective lens. Um, now, and then uh, the image of the light source when we look at it with the camera or the eye is, uh, is out of focus because we're focusing on the uh, other conjugate planes corresponding to the specimen. But if we want to see the um, illuminating uh, image planes, we can flip in, um, uh, many microscopes have uh, something called a, a Bertrand lens that's uh, built into the body of the microscope and that allows us instead of focusing on the specimen to focus on the back focal plane of the objective lens. And because all of these are in conjugate image planes, when we focus on the back focal plane of the objective, we should also uh, see in the same conjugate image plane the front focal plane of the condenser, and that's where this iris is located. Uh, so with the Bertrand lens in place, if I open and close this iris of the condenser, I should be able to see the uh, physical leaves of the iris uh, opening and closing. And uh, the, the light, the image of the light, is also um, uh, projected or imaged onto that front focal plane. So when, again, I look at the back focal plane of the objective lens, I should be able to see the image of uh, the light source as well.